After a fight with my hubby, my boss pulled me over and kissed me. Then this happened. This is crazy. I've never been this confused and scared in my entire life. I'm literally in a state where I don't even know what to do. I got myself into a big mess and I really don't know how to fix this. My marriage is at stake here and everything is crumbling right in front of me. I cheated on my husband with my boss at a corporate party. I don't even want to start by putting the blame on alcohol. Yes, we both had drinks, but it wasn't much that could make us drunk and not have control over ourselves. I was the one that cheated, but it's my husband that's getting threatened by my affair partner. I feel ashamed and disgusted right now. Apparently, my boss is threatening my husband not to divorce me because of my infidelity with him. His threats are very intimidating and I feel so scared for my husband. He is a good man and he doesn't deserve to be treated that way. To make matters even worse, my husband is not even intimidated by all these threats. Right now, we're not living under the same roof. I had to run away because the house was becoming too heated and sophisticated for me. One more day with Justin is like living with the devil. He isn't the man I knew or rather the man I thought he was. He has turned into a ruthless psycho that is not ready to spare anyone that dares to offend him. To say that I'm in a very big problem is an understatement. I'm currently in a dilapidated state. My life is falling apart, guys. Before I continue, I want to briefly introduce myself. My name is Pia. I'm 25 years old. The name of my husband is Justin. He is 29 years old. Justin and I have been together for the past three years. But as it seems now, we're currently going through a divorce. I regret everything so much that I wish there is a way I could fix this. I allowed myself to be carried away by the feeling of the moment. Justin, my husband, is a very nice and caring man. He didn't deserve this and I just hope he can have mercy on me. My husband and I met a few years ago and we were so much in love. I didn't really know what actually happened but I fell out of love with him two years after we got married. Despite his gentle and soft-hearted nature, I still cheated on him. Justin is really a caring man and he didn't deserve what I did. I didn't only cheat on him, he also got threatened by my affair partner. I know you all would actually blame me and say nasty things, but it's fine, I'm ready for anything. Ned. So guys, like I said earlier, things started falling out of place between me and my husband, Justin. I didn't know when it got to that point, but it was not intentional. Sometimes I do get pissed by some of the kind attitude he displays. No guys, don't get me wrong. He didn't actually do anything bad. If at all he did, it wasn't something that could make anyone be that mad for long. The most annoying part of it is that any woman that was to be in my position wouldn't see it as a big deal because of the kind of person my husband is. But I find a lot of fault with anything he did. This happens when you no longer feel the same way with your partner like you did at the beginning of your love story. Though Justin and I relationship wasn't a love story, but it was something that was beautiful at the beginning, but here we're now. I no longer feel like it anymore. Don't worry guys, I will tell you all how it all started. Everything started when I got employed at my workplace. I work as a secretary at a company. After Justin and I got married, I struggled to get a job. Feeding or clothing wasn't a problem to me because my husband provided everything. He didn't buy the idea of me working. So long he was working and was earning well, he didn't see the need for me to get a job. But I didn't want to be idle or something. I needed to make something with my life. During those times I didn't have a job, I was not nagging or taking it out on Justin. He helped me seek a job. It was all thanks to him that I got this job. But I won't bore you all about how that happened and how I got the job. Moving on guys, after what seemed like forever to get a job, I finally got one. I was so excited that I was finally going to work. Justin supported me during those moments. However, things started to change a few months later after I started working. Well, to me actually, I don't know about my husband. What changed for me was the overwhelming nature of the job. Maybe it was because I was employed as a secretary. I did most of the job assigned to me and I was commended by my boss on several occasions. My boss's name is Martins. He is the CEO of the company I worked for. Sometimes Martins do propose to treat me to either lunch or dinner for a job well done, but I often decline the offer. At that time, I wasn't ready to start going out with my boss or to even be seen with him in public outside the workplace. I didn't want my coworkers to have the impression of me dating the boss. There were several occasions where Martins complimented my dressings. Sometimes he purposely gave me work so as to stay late at the office with him. He made several advances to me, but I didn't have any at all. I made it clear to him about my marital status, but he wasn't buying it. Rather, he told me that there wasn't anything wrong if I went on a date with him. Despite his sweet talking, I didn't mind all that he said. I was focused on doing my job and at the same time ignoring Martin's. <laughs> so guys, there was a day we all were summoned into the boardroom by the boss. 
It was five minutes long. Martins called to let us know about an event that was going to happen about a week from then. He told us to look our best and strictly warned us not to disappoint him because the party was unusual. We all left the room and everyone went back to continue all what they were doing. I got home that day and told Justin about the party and he didn't stop me from going. Rather told me to be careful, which I assured him I would. So guys, a day to the party, Justin and I got into a heated argument. Apparently he got home late the previous night and kept me worried. When I tried talking to him, he didn't say much and he walked away. I still insisted and followed him upstairs. It was there we got into a quarrel. I was so angry that I didn't talk to him throughout that day. The next day was the party. It was scheduled at 4 o'clock p.m. that day. We had the day off and didn't go to work. That time, Justin and I were still giving each other our attitudes. When it was time for the party, I got dressed and left. The location of the party was a little bit far from the house. I boarded a cab because I didn't want to drive when going back. The party was a corporate one. You needed an invitation before you could get in. I had taken my invite along with me so as to avoid any embarrassment. When I got there, I was asked to show it before they allowed me in. I got in and everywhere was looking beautiful. Honestly, guys, I haven't been to that kind of gathering before then. But to my co-workers, it was their fifth time because they do come there on several occasions. While I was busy admiring the whole place, I got a tap on my shoulder. I turned to see who it was. Guys, it was Martins, my boss. Martins appeared handsomely dressed. I quickly distracted myself from admiring him so it wouldn't notice. Martins, as usual, complimented my dressing. I smiled and also complimented his dressing. Martins then held my hands and asked me to follow him. We walked up to a couple of people and we changed pleasantries. Not long after, everyone in the party was gathered. The host gave out a speech and everyone clicked glasses afterwards. I won't lie, guys, I really enjoyed myself at the party. The party was to end at 10 p.m. that day, but I ended up going home by 12 a.m. because I wanted to avoid Justin. I planned on getting home that day after I must have slept off. So guys, I was enjoying myself at the party. I took about two shots to forget about what had happened between me and Justin. Just when I was about to take the third one, Martins held my hand and told me to stop. I got so angry and I tried dragging my hand from his grip, but then what Martins did next left me surprised. Guess what, guys? Martins pulled me over and kissed me. Yes, guys, he kissed me. We were like that before Martins pulled over. At that point, I was confused as to why he did that. Honestly, I also wanted to kiss him the moment I met him at the party. Martins then held my hands to a room and we spent a few hours together. It was 11.30 p.m. when I woke up. By that time, Martins was not on the bed. He was in the bathroom. A few minutes later, he came out and I felt a little bit ashamed, but Martins told me that everything was okay. We got out of the room and went back to where we had left everybody. But to our greatest surprise, a few people were around and it was the decorators. Everyone must have left early though. So guys, Martins and I then left the hall. Martins dropped me off at my neighborhood before he drove off. I got inside and met Justin fast asleep. Looking at Justin, I felt a bit of guilt because I had just cheated on him with my boss. But then again, I remembered what had happened between me and Martins and it brightened my mood. That made me forget about the argument Justin and I had. I went to the bathroom and freshened up before I joined Justin on the bed. For a few minutes, I found it hard to sleep because I was just thinking about Martins. I thought of how I was going to face him at the office after all what had happened at the party. I became scared and anxious at the same time. A lot of thoughts came to my mind that I was asking myself if after everything he fired me or reported it to my husband. I was in that thought when my phone beeped. It was a text message. I wondered who it was at that time of the night. I took my phone and checked. Guys, it was from Martins. He texted to wish me a good night with a love emoji. Seeing that made me feel better. That confirmed to me that he wasn't all what I was thinking at that moment. I quickly texted back and dropped my phone and slept off. The next day was a Saturday morning. I got up and did the house chores and resumed back to the work I had brought home the previous days to do before the party. Justin also went to hang out with his friends around the neighborhood. I was all left at home that morning. A few hours into my work, Martins called me to check on me. We spoke for a while before he asked me to come meet him at a place not too far from the office. I parked all what I was doing and quickly got dressed and headed out of the house. I tried calling Justin to tell him I was leaving the house, but his lines were switched off. Of course, I wasn't going to tell him that I'm going to hang out with my boss. No guys, not at all. Just wanted to let him know that I was heading out, but that didn't work out because I wasn't able to reach him. Since he wasn't reachable, I didn't waste too much time before leaving. 
I got into my car and drove to the address Martins had texted me. It was a 30 minute ride and I got there on time. So guys, when I got there, I called Martins to inform him about my arrival. He then asked me to follow a route that led to a beach. Apparently Martins wanted us to hang out together on a beach. He planned everything out well. Martins knew that none of his workers could locate this place so easily. That was why he asked me to come here. He knew I wouldn't be comfortable if any of the workers saw us together. I really liked the idea and I was very happy that he thought about me before choosing the location. The atmosphere was cozy and warm. I loved the sound of the waters. There was background country music and everywhere was lively. Martins left and went to get us something to eat. I took that opportunity to go into the waters. The feeling was mesmerizing, guys. It was a place that's good to clear one's head if overwhelmed with work or life issues. Not long after, Martins yelled my name and asked me to come over to where he was. He had gotten a good spot for us to stay and listen to the sound of the waters. We sat down and talked about a couple of things. Martins told me about some secrets he hadn't told anyone and also why he was single. Well, according to him, he wasn't ready to settle down prior to that time. We talked about a few things, went into the waters to have some fun, and then we got back home afterwards. I really enjoyed myself that day, and I hope to do that with him during that time. I went home that day and met Justin at home. He had returned a few hours before I got back. After the usual cordial greetings, I went upstairs to freshen up. Not long after I came out and went down, I met Justin going through my phone. I was surprised as to why he was doing that. I asked him to give me back my phone, but he refused and told me not to take any step further. Justin went through my chats and text messages with my boss. He got so angry and threw my phone to the wall. He pulled me closer and yelled at me. Justin's eyes were burning like fire. I got so scared and tried to pull away, but he twisted my arms and made sure it hurt me so bad. Justin left home that day and didn't say where he was going. I was in pain due to the way he twisted my arms. I thought of what had just happened and I took my phone to tell Martins that my husband had gotten to know about us. I was really scared of what Justin was going to do the next day. I tried calling him, but his lines were switched off. The next day, I still couldn't reach out to Justin. I was scared, and so I went over to my boss's place. My boss is an influential person. Apparently my boss and Justin's boss are friends, or rather were childhood friends. When the matter escalated, I went over to see my boss and told him about Justin's decision to divorce me. That day, my boss assured me he was going to do something about it and not to bother myself. At that moment, I felt a little relieved and hoped that everything was going to be okay. I left my boss's office and went back home. When I got home, I saw Justin's car parked outside. I was scared at first, but I decided to go inside to have a conversation with him. It had been three days since he left home after the incident. Guys, I got inside and met Justin seated on the couch. Right in front of him was a divorce papers. I went closer to where he was seated and knelt down in front of him. I bursted into tears and cried, telling him how sorry I was. For like 15 minutes, Justin kept silent and didn't utter anything to me. I didn't stand up either. I was still there hoping he could have a change of mind. Just before I could say anything, Justin stood up and went upstairs. He snubbed me and did as if no one was talking. My husband spent another 15 minutes there. I didn't really understand what he was doing and I couldn't go there to see it because I was so scared. Guys, you all wouldn't believe what he did next. My husband came out of the room and stood at the balcony upstairs and threw my things down to the sitting room. He messed up my things and even broke some valuables. All our pictures together, Justin threw them out all. I ran from where I was because I didn't want to get hurt. Justin didn't even show any sign of concern. When he was done throwing my things out, he yelled from the balcony to leave his house and take the divorce papers along. I started pleading and told him how sorry I was, but Justin wasn't buying any of that. My husband told me that he gave me 50 seconds to leave his house and didn't want to see me when he came out again. I knew the content of that order. He didn't stutter when he said it. I knew I would be the one to regret it at the end of the day. So guys, I quickly parked all my things and left before he could come outside again. Of course, I didn't take the divorce papers. I had hoped that he was going to change his mind and also I remembered what my boss told me and I keyed into that. When I left the house, I called a friend of mine and asked if I could hang around for a while. Her name is Tina. She was one of my high school mates. Tina accepted me and told me that I could stay as long as I want. I didn't plan on staying that long though. I just needed a place to stay for a while to search for everything. I didn't want to inconvenience her. So guys, the next morning I called my boss and told him everything that happened the previous day. Martins asked for us to see at our usual spot, which was a nearby coffee shop not too far from the office. 
Since my infidelity with my boss came out, I haven't been to work. In fact, my boss gave me a full week to settle everything with my husband and told me to resume anytime I wanted. That was his little way of trying to help me out. I got dressed that morning and went to the coffee shop and waited for him. It took Martin's like an hour before he came. I was so pissed off and mad. At that moment, I was under a lot of pressure. Only I understood what I was going through then. To say that everything overwhelmed me then is an understatement. When Martins came, he saw how I looked and he nodded his self-pity. He was surprised to see me that way. He didn't know the gravity of things then and how overwhelming it was for me. During those times, I was gradually losing my mind. I narrated everything to Martins all over again and bursted into tears. I cried bitterly and told him how badly I want to get back with my husband. Martins held my hands and told me not to cry anymore that he knew what exactly to do. At that moment, Martins asked me what job my husband does in the name of his workplace. Hearing that from him, I got angry and asked him if that was going to solve the problem. I got so pissed that everyone at the coffee shop started staring at us. I literally pulled out a scene and those that were interested to listen were staring. Martins calmed me down and told me to trust him. He also asked me to tell him where exactly he needed to go. At that moment, I honestly didn't understand what he was up to, but I gave him the details anyway. Martins looked surprised and asked me to say the name of the place again and asked if it was the right address. I looked at him with anger and told him why wouldn't I know where my husband works or the kind of job he does. Apparently during the times Martins and I got so close I didn't disclose anything about my husband. He knew I was married but didn't know Justin. So seeing my boss surprised about where Justin works was something that I was a little bit confused about. I didn't understand what was going on. Just when I wanted to ask if there was any problem, Martins pulled out his phone and called someone, asking if the person on the other end of the call was in the office. Martins quickly hung up and asked that we leave immediately. I was confused and didn't know what was happening at that time. Immediately, I asked Martin what happened and why we were leaving so soon, but he didn't give me any answer. Rather, he held my hand and pulled me from the coffee shop. We got into the car and we drove off to God knows where. During the ride, I kept asking where we were going, but Martins was silent all through. He didn't utter anything or give me any clue of what he was up to. A few minutes later, we got to a place and he parked. It was a 15 minute ride, not too far from the coffee shop. He asked me to come down from the car and follow him. Since he didn't say anything to me throughout the ride, I sat down and didn't make an attempt to stand up. Martins looked at me and then told me to trust him. He got down from the car and went to the front door and opened it for me. I let out a loud hiss and came down from the car. Honestly speaking, guys, I didn't know the place Martins had brought me. All I was thinking at that moment was about my husband. I followed Martins and we got into a compound. The house was so big and orderly decorated. Only a rich man could own this kind of place, I thought to myself. We got inside and we were asked to wait at the visitor's room. A few minutes later, the person we had come to see came out. Mainly looking at the person, I knew I had seen him somewhere but couldn't remember immediately. I kept staring at him until he got seated. I watched him and Martins exchange pleasantries. I was only able to say hi because I was trying to remember the face. The person knew I was not settled and asked if everything was okay. It was then I asked him if we had met before. He bursted into laughter and said that I didn't remember him. I didn't know what to say when he introduced himself. It was then I remembered who he was. Guys, you all wouldn't believe this. He was my husband's boss, Harry. Honestly, guys, I didn't know that my boss and Justin's boss knew each other. It was right there I knew that there were childhood friends. I was so shocked and surprised at the same time. The only time I met my husband's boss was when I went to see my husband at his office. That was when we got married. That was the first and only time that I had encountered Harry. Seeing him again with another man other than my husband made me a little bit ashamed. I felt a sense of guilt and shamefulness. My boss then told Harry everything that happened. Harry didn't seem surprised and he told me not to bother myself because he would make. Sure, my husband and I will get back together. I asked him how that was going to be possible, but he didn't give me any answer. He just told me to go home and relax. My boss Martins also assured him at that moment. He told me they were going to take care of things. I honestly didn't know what they were up to, and I pleaded with them not to harm Justin. They looked at me and laughed. Harry said no one was going to get hurt and nothing would happen. After a few minutes later, Martins proposed we head back home. We left Harry's place and he dropped me at Tina's place. I told him about Tina and how she offered to help me to stay with her. Martins nodded and told me it was a good idea 
and he came closer and stretched his arms to give me a hug. I declined and told him I wasn't interested. After all, it was because of him that I was in this mess in the first place. I banged the door and left. I was so angry at that moment and hugging Martins was the last thing I needed. I just wanted to get back with my husband so badly. I messed up and I wanted to clean up my mess. A few days went by and I didn't hear anything from Martins or Harry. The waiting also contributed to the pressure. I couldn't even eat anything during that period. Most of the time, Tina had to force me to eat something so as to not fall sick. How would I have been able to eat when I just got sent out of my matrimonial home? My parents would literally kill me if I dared to show up at their house. No responsible parent would advise or support their daughter or sons to cheat on their partners. I have been getting a lot of calls and text messages from my parents, but I'm not ready to return any because I already know what they want to say. I just wanted to settle everything and get back with Justin. Four days of not getting any feedback from Martins, I decided to go pay him a visit. The process was taking too long and nothing was happening. I got dressed that morning to go see Martins. Just when I was about to leave, I got a text message from my husband. I was happy to get a message from him. I thought maybe he wanted to talk to me or tell me to come back home, but I got the opposite of it. Guys, Justin sent me a long message. The content of the message was not appeasing at all. In the text, Justin narrated how his boss threatened to have him fired if he went ahead to divorce me. He also told me how my boss, Martins, sent some men to come over to the house to beat him up. Rather, he was the one that later taught them a big lesson. He also told me that he would not spare any of them if they tried what they did. Justin did tell me to show my boss and his boss the text he had just sent and would be waiting for them again. Not only that, guys, Justin also told me that he was ready and up to the task for anything. He told me that he had made his decision and no one can change it, not even his boss. To crown it all, Justin called me a shameless woman and called me all manner of names. It was then I realized that Justin was dare serious in having a divorce. I didn't read everything in the text message before a call came in. It was my husband, Justin. I picked the call and started telling him that I knew nothing about the threat. In Justin's mind, I was the one that told Martins about it. My husband got to know about Martins and Harry's friendship. He had thought maybe I had planned everything. I tried explaining it to him, but he didn't care to listen. Apparently, he called to ask if I had received the text and also called to tell me about the divorce papers. Justin didn't know where I was living at that time. He didn't care to know, and I didn't expect him to. Since he didn't know my exact location, he sent the divorce papers to the family lawyer to give it to me and have it signed within two weeks. At that moment, I was shattered. My marriage crumbled right in front of me. I knew that there was nothing left again. It didn't take Justin a second before he signed the divorce papers. Same way I didn't think about it before I cheated on him with my boss at the corporate party. Before I could say anything to my husband, he hung the call on me. I tried calling it back, but he kept on rejecting the call. After some time, he had it switched off, and then a few days later, Justin blocked my lines and also blocked me on all social media platforms. <laughs> After what happened that morning, I couldn't go to Martin's place again. I locked myself inside and cried my eyes out. I made a terrible mistake by cheating on my husband with my boss. My husband turned a cold shoulder towards me and cared less about me, and now he wants to divorce. Guys, I would like you all to tell me what to do about this. Right now, I really need your advice, please. I would be under the comments section. Update. Hi, guys. The last time I asked you all to give me advice on what to do about my husband and I planning on getting a divorce. Well, I'm here to complete my story and I hope you all would learn something from this. I have read all the messages and opinion advice you all are giving and honestly, guys, I appreciate them all. I deserve most of the hateful comments and I truly regret my actions. Hi. So guys, all efforts to have my husband change his mind went in vain. Right now, as I'm writing this, I'm currently a divorcee. My husband and I have gone our separate ways. My husband developed a strong hatred for me after learning about my infidelity. He doesn't want to see me or have anything to do with me. To make sure that his cruel revenge was well complete, he started dating one of his longtime friends from high school. I won't lie, guys. That part really got me hard. I was so pissed and upset that I didn't know what to do. What I did to my husband was unspeakable and no man in his right senses would take in his unfaithful wife. My case was different. I didn't cheat on him in that corporate party alone. I also did it secretly and went on several dates with my boss. That was what angered Justin the most. He was so disappointed in me. My husband, whom I thought was a very gentle man, turned into a ruthless psycho. Since I knew him and that we have been married to each other, I haven't seen that ruthless side of him. Guys, y'all need to see it. During our divorce process, we had little contact. Justin looked at me with scorn. 
It was as if I woke up the beast in him. I couldn't muster the courage to even look at him twice. His eyes were burning as if it was on fire. It was during those times that I knew that I had messed up big time. I turned a gentleman into a ruthless psycho. My husband didn't even want to listen to anything that I had to say. The most important thing was that I cheated on him. Guys, despite the threats that my boss was giving to my husband, Justin didn't relent. He still went ahead to divorce me. Don't get me wrong, guys. I'm not in support of him getting threatened, no. I thought maybe he would have a change of mind, but he didn't. When my boss threatened him that he was going to lose his job if he dared divorce me, Justin wasn't moved at all. Guess what he did? He went to his workplace and gave his boss his resignation letter. Yes, guys, Justin quitted his job. According to him, he would rather quit the job than to take me back. He was done having anything to do with me and didn't want to see me again in his house. So guys, that was how everything turned out. Justin's mind was made up and there was nothing I could do to change it. I noticed that I was gradually losing my mind and I wanted to take care of myself. And so I signed the divorce papers and sent it back to him. I also moved out from Tina's place because she was also trying to find her feet. It's easy living alone and I didn't want to inconvenience her. I got a small apartment and moved in immediately after the divorce. I will be staying here until I finally find something to do. I know you all would be wondering what happened between me and Martins, right? Well, after the divorce, I went over to his house and asked if I could move in. Martins bluntly refused and told me to ever call him or look for him again because he doesn't want to have anything to do with me. He had had his fun and there's nothing exciting about me again. He banged the door on me and I left shamelessly. That day I went home and made up my mind to move out from Tina's place. Tina was supportive. She didn't want to leave, but I insisted on moving out. So guys, this is me now. It's been two weeks since I have been staying on my own. It isn't really easy here, but I will find my way. Justin has moved on with another lady and they are having their best time in another country. I'm not stalking him. In fact, I wish him the best. This is my story, guys. I hope you all have learned something from this. I have also learned my lesson and I think life taught me a very big lesson. So my, male 47 husband and I, female 37, met at one of the Living Legends live performances, which was AI Green's soul concert that was held in Orpheum Theater, LA, in a year 2020. He was sitting on a seat next to mine. So as we listened to the lovely soul music that Mr. Green was performing, we discussed how great he was and how his songs always find a way to connect to the heart. I mean, even if you were the person who didn't believe in love, but once you listened to AI Green's music, you would think again about finding love. Mike was a very smart, handsome, and funny man to be around. You know when you just connect with someone on the first day of seeing or meeting them? That was me and Mike. We just clicked, you know. We had a lot in common and our goals collided. He was that missing piece I've been looking for all those years. That time we were having a very great night. AI Green was and still is my favorite soul and R&B singer. To me, I think he will remain a legend no matter what. So when the concert was done, we went out together, still continuing with our discussions until he asked that we go to the nearest open restaurant to grab something to eat, so I agreed. We talked a lot about Mr. Green and how his songs always find a way to connect to the soul. We ended up exchanging numbers. I didn't know that I would meet the person I had thought I would spend the rest of my life with at my favorite singer's live concert. Well, we had a very same taste when it came to music. We both loved soul and R&B. I think that was how we just clicked. A day later, he called me saying he was checking in to hear if I had arrived well at home, which was a very great gesture and so sweet of him. I was not even expecting his call anytime soon, but he did call, and I was surprised yet charmed. So he asked to see me when he comes back from his business trip. I couldn't believe that he would go to a night concert while he still had to go on a business trip. When I asked him that, he just replied by saying, I would miss everything but not AI Green's concerts, especially if they were around LA. I would rather miss my business trip flight than not to attend the Legends live concerts. I didn't expect his answer, but I understood him. So I agreed to see him when he came back and he promised to check up on me whenever he gets time since he was going to Africa. From that day, I couldn't stop thinking about him. I mean, there was this connection that I felt when I would speak to him. His voice was like a cure to my sickness, you know. I would feel my heart beating fast and getting butterflies whenever he would call me. Was I falling for the guy? Well, I think so. I mean, who wouldn't? His voice alone would make a woman melt, especially his morning voice. I was falling in love with it every single day. We became friends. He would tell me a lot about his future plans and what kind of a woman he wanted in his life. So after a month, he came back and he kept his promise. Mind you, I had thought he was going to forget or make a lame excuse, but he didn't. Our first official meetup was great. 
I got to see him live during the day since the first time we met, and it was at night. And to say he was handsome would be an understatement. You wouldn't see that he was in his 40s already. He was aging so well like fine wine. Though we would talk over video calls, but it wasn't the same as seeing him in front of me, you know. I couldn't even speak more than three words with him because I was so glued to his handsomeness. His perfectly shaped face, nicely trimmed mustache, perfect white teeth, and to top it all, he had deep dimples, which made him look sexier. I was really charmed. His dark caramel self was one thing I would find myself staring at him with so much admiration, especially when he smiles or laughs and his one dimple gets visible, and it turned me on. I know it sounds creepy, but I had that thing, that special thing for dark caramel skin people with dimples, either males or females. I just find them beautiful, especially since I was light caramel without any dimples. I live my desires to dark caramel people that I'm used to. Anyway, our bond grew fonder each passing day. We first went on dates as friends or people who enjoyed each other's company, which went on for three and a half months because I remember the day he told me that he was too old to be playing hide and seek, playing friends like these. He confessed his feelings for me on the 4th of July. I couldn't believe it, you know. I also had some feelings for the guy, but I got comfortable with the fact that he was not going to make any move on me. Even though we would sometimes kiss here and there, help each other intimately here and there, but I thought that was just going to be it. I mean, I somehow saw myself as a person who was not on his level or his type of person he would date or even get married to. He was too perfect, and I on the other side had a very bad history when it came to dating. Look at that. You know, the way Mike was speaking, I was taken back and charmed. Mind you, I had just recovered from a very abusive and controlling fiancé who, I thank God every day for taking me out of that relationship because it was bad. Not like bad, bad, but yeah, bad, because one of my past partners were very toxic and abusive. Luckily, I managed to break through it. While the other one broke off our engagement because I was a very sloppy person, I would make mistakes and sometimes do things that would jeopardize our relationship and somehow feel like I was still in that toxic relationship. So I was somehow scared and not sure about Mike's, my ex-husband, love confession. Not because I didn't feel the same way as him, but because I didn't know if I would be a good partner to him. He even told me that he wanted a life partner, meaning that person was actually looking for someone he would marry and grow old with. And I didn't think I was fit to be in that category, so I told him that I would think about his love proposal. I had a talk with my aunt, who was the one who played a role of being a parent to me ever since both of my parents passed on. My aunt assured me that nothing would happen, even though I had doubts about myself, you know. But she told me to give myself a chance to love. A day later, I called Mike and asked for a meeting with him. Luckily, he agreed. So we met and talked. Well, more like I talked. I told him about my past failed relationships and my fears, which he actually understood because I didn't expect him to understand, but he surprised me. He told me that no one was perfect and we all learn from our past mistakes. So in order to move on from our past, we have to accept them and learn from them. He said a lot of sweet words that made me believe that I could change. I mean, God had given me another chance to love, so I had to embrace it and be grateful to it. But I guess some things are just meant to be. I was just made to be alone. After our talk, we made our relationship official. We had a lot in common. The chemistry and connection was there, you know? I fell really hard for him. He made me feel good enough. Not to mention the way he looked at me. It was like I was the only important and precious thing that existed in his world. He treated me like a queen, spoiling me like a child. Life has been great. I wouldn't say we had problems, but to me, he was my lover. And also my best friend. We talked about everything and anything you know. Every moment with him was never a dull moment. It was great. He used to fulfill my desires, give me everything I needed from a man. He supported, and most of all, he understood. I couldn't get him off my head. We chatted every day and I was actually falling harder for the guy. The attention he would give me was on top of the world. He would always ask if I was still okay. He was really fussy over me in a charming way though and I loved the attention he gave me. We went out a lot. He introduced me to his friends and some of his business associates whenever I would accompany him to those business gala dinners and to some of his employees including his personal assistant that he was working with. It was truly a great moment for me. He was also everything I needed in a man and he was very understanding and loving. So I thought I had found the one. The love of my life, but I guess I was wrong. The S asterisk X was okay, but mostly he was a two times a week vanilla kind of guy. But he indulged me when I wanted to do some more adventurous things and was generally attentive to what I needed. He rarely initiated though, which was a bummer for me. But I was so happy and lacked nothing besides the fact that he would go on business trips a lot. But he was going with me if I was available and spoiled me rotten. But look, 
I messed all that up and went for stones while the diamond was right in front of my eyes. Mike was everything a woman would ask for and more. He was the type of a guy that most women fantasize and dream about. Though like any relationship, we experienced our fair share of ups and downs. However, a small mistake would soon test the strength of our bond in an unexpected way. Though I still think that if some things are not meant for you, they are just not meant to be for you. And love was some of the things that were not meant for me. That was how I would console myself every day whenever I think of my past and think about how perfect my life was with Mike. But I ruined all that. All because of what? Lust, lack of affection, and greed. Because what I did is called being greedy. I was not enough and grateful for what I already had in my life. Instead, I went out and looked for something that I had thought was better, while something better was in front of my eyes. I sometimes would think, what if he leaves me someday and finds someone else better, who would be on his level, and I would be left alone to pick up the broken pieces of my fragile heart. I love my husband very much, well, more like I still love him, but you know, sometimes love alone is not enough. I'm not a woman who would cheat on her husband, but the way he had distanced himself from me, it made me feel like we were somehow losing connection, or the connection that we once had that disconnected. I felt like I had lost him as a husband and my child had lost him as a father. It was just too much to handle. Throughout all that was happening in my house, I was just grateful to my friend Bianca, female 34, for always being there for me and allowing me to vent to her. I really don't know what I would have done or where I would have been if she was not there. As much as she was younger than me, the advice that she would give me felt like I was taking them from my own parents. Even though Mike was not a fan of Bianca, though he had no choice but to act like he had accepted our friendship. Bianca was also married to a man 10 years older than her. Our husbands are friends and business partners, so we started getting along during a trip that was planned by our husbands well more like their business trip and we tagged along. Bianca and I connected, you know. The first day when we were introduced to each other, we just clicked. I really didn't understand why my husband, or let me say my ex-husband, didn't like my friendship with Bianca because it was harmless and innocent. Or that's what I thought it was. So for many years, I had only been in a committed relationship with one person. While I cherished the love and connection we shared, I couldn't help but wonder what it would be like to explore other relationships and experiences. It was a natural curiosity that many people can relate to. I approached the topic with my partner, hoping for understanding and open-mindedness. It all started with a simple conversation. I mustered up the courage to express my desire to try being with another man. I thought my partner would understand that we could navigate this new territory together. Unfortunately, instead of an open-minded response, I was met with anger and resentment. Unfortunately, he didn't react the way I had hoped. Instead of having a calm and rational conversation, he exploded in anger. His reaction took me by surprise, and it quickly became clear that he wasn't willing to entertain the idea of me being with someone else. My partner's reaction caught me off guard. I never expected such a strong negative response. We had always prided ourselves on open communication, but this topic seemed to strike a nerve. Over the next few days, tension grew between us. He became distant and cold, and it seemed like every conversation ended in an argument. We both knew that something had changed and it was tearing us apart. I had tried to come to terms with my wrong and tried to apologize for how I had approached the situation. But I didn't know what to say and where to start apologizing because what I felt the other day was what I was still feeling. I realized that my approach may not have been the best. Instead of having an open and honest conversation, I should have taken more time to understand my partner's feelings and concerns. Perhaps there were underlying issues that I had failed to address, which was why I had decided to think of another approach that he would understand. I didn't need him to do anything. I just wanted his thoughts and advice. A few days later, I waited for my husband to cool down so I could approach the topic again. I had to wait a couple of days before I angered him again. I didn't want to take things in my own hands and go outside to get what I had desired because that would be cheating. I loved my husband. Heck, I even still love him so much. We had vowed to ourselves to always be open with one another. We believed that strong communication skills were a key to a successful marriage. Oh, and not to forget loyalty, respect, and commitment. During the day as he was at work, I got the time to prepare some romantic dinner for the two of us. I wanted to soothe his heart first before dropping the same bomb that had angered him before. Later on, he came back and I was nervous. I didn't know how he was going to take my thoughts or desires again, but I hoped for the best. I gave him water to bathe and prepared supper. I wanted everything to be perfect, you know. So when he came back from taking a bath, we had a light conversation. 
I knew that he had forgiven me for the first encounter when I dropped the bomb, but I had to do it again, unfortunately. So I started the conversation with the apology of how I had approached my desire situation and how much I wanted us to speak about it without arguing or fighting. The more he looked at me, showing that he was listening, the more my armpits were sweating because of the nerves. I didn't regret marrying Mike. I mean, if I didn't want to get married to him, I would have rejected his proposal or asked him to wait a bit before we got married. When I agreed to be his wife, I knew what I was putting myself into and it was a lifetime commitment. But on another thought, I felt like I had got married way too early and I was still young. I didn't give myself any chance to live, be myself and be like my friends, living a carefree life. I didn't give myself to be young and do young people things, but I rushed to get married. Now I found myself being stuck with so many desires that my husband couldn't deliver. So I told him everything that I was feeling, from the fact that he was no longer giving me time like he used to. He was always focused at work and on the children's home shelter. Getting his full attention was something that I would only dream about and it stayed there, in my dreams. I opened up to him about my feelings and the fact that I was craving to try another man. After I had said that his eyes changed from being clear to pure red, he looked enraged. I told my friend Bianca about the issues that I was facing in my marriage and to my surprise, we were actually going through the same thing. One thing about Bianca is that she loves them younger. She loves exploring guys who are younger than her, which sometimes makes me think of the reason why he married a man who is 10 years older than her, yet her desires are for younger guys. It gave me the idea that maybe she had married Jack, Bianca's husband, for money and not love and happiness. But that wasn't my business. Bianca suggested that we go out to clubs so that we could release the tension that we had in our homes. The way things were happening at home, I mean the tension was too thick and I didn't want my baby to see his parents tense like how Mike and I were. I took my baby to my aunt's house that time, and I was just glad that she understood my reasoning and the tension, though she didn't know the whole truth. I couldn't tell her why my husband and I were going through some patch, because I knew that either she was going to scold me, or tell me to stop and erase whatever thoughts I had, and make me pray for the foreboding behavior that I had started. So Bianca and I went out as we had planned. I have never felt so carefree and alive since forever. Bianca and I promised each other that we were just going to enjoy ourselves, do whatever that we had been longing to do and live in the moment. I followed her advice and lived like I had never lived before. I had forgotten about my marriage crisis and the fact that I had an insecure husband. I felt young again, you know. That day, Bianca suggested that if we wanted to either have fun with someone else or explore our desires, that was our chance to experience wildlife for once. Since that day, we had started going out a lot, either to male strippers clubs or going wherever there's fun. We planned that we would be wild hogs in clubs once every month to find our true selves and live the lives that we had been desiring for so long. I knew that I should not have agreed with her, but I was no longer happy with my husband, and I really desired to at least try other men and see how they were going to make me feel. I love intimacy and those rough and wild actions that are done during either lovemaking or intimate moments, and I was not getting that on my husband. Next. So one day Bianca and I had started doing what we had agreed on and went to parties, clubs, etc., to explore and seek for what we had been desiring throughout our whole married lives. We planned a trip together, leaving our hubbies behind, of course, just to explore ourselves, and maybe our desires would be met by someone from another country. Maybe the kind of action that my heart desires for is somewhere outside our city or country. I had told my husband that we were going on a girl's trip and we would go for a month. I knew that he didn't want me to go because I had mentioned that I was going with Bianca. But Bianca's husband James convinced my husband Mike that he should allow me to go. Little did they know that our plan, Bianca and myself, was to cheat on them to fulfill our heart desires. I knew that if Mike was to find out about my plan with Bianca, he would make sure that I regret even saying yes when he asked me to marry him. It was not going to be nice at all, but I still went with it, forgetting that whatever happens in secret or in the dark always finds its way to the light. So Bianca and I decided to visit Dubai because we fell in love with it. Unfortunately, the last time we went there, we were going with our partners, so we told ourselves that we will go back alone when we get a chance. So as we were in Dubai, we went to this club and it was booming. We even found friends when we got there. Everyone was so welcoming and very nice, I knew that we would enjoy our vacation in the United Arab Emirate country. The group of friends that we had found there were actually there to celebrate one of their friend's birthday party. So they asked us to join them. Some of them were going with their girlfriends while others were going alone. I missed Mike so much, but I couldn't let him and his issues ruin my month getaway or vacation. 
so I pushed everything back and lived in the moment. I told myself that whatever that I was doing and will still have to do, I would be doing it for myself and my heart desires and my happiness. That night of our second day in Dubai, I had too many drinks and I was feeling carefree and silly. And before I knew it, I was dancing on the table, singing at the top of my lungs. The guys were laughing and cheering me on, and I loved the attention I was getting. I was letting my wild and happy self loose a little. I would even kiss some guys here and there while Bianca was just sticking to one guy that was there. As much as we knew that our actions were wrong, but we didn't want to accept that. And we told, or let me say, we lied to ourselves so bad to a point that we became nonchalant and ignorant and didn't even think about the consequences that we would face for what we did. We just lived in a moment, you know. As I was busy dancing and having fun, I saw this guy by the bar of the club that we were in. He had piercing blue eyes and a charming smile. He was standing at the bar, watching me with interest, and I couldn't help but feel drawn to him. I know it was wrong, but I couldn't resist. He kept looking at me with his sexy eyes. I decided to stop dancing and catch my breath, so I went to the bar to get water because I was too sloshed. He came over to the side where I was getting my cold water and he introduced himself as Michael. He was even more charming when you looked at him closer. I didn't believe him because I knew myself that when it came to dancing, I had two left feet, but I managed to make a plan and move my body whenever I am in the moment or tipsy or drunk. I don't remember much of what we talked about, but I do remember feeling alive and carefree for the first time in months. It was exhilarating, and I couldn't help but wonder what it would be like to be with Alex. But as soon as the thought crossed my mind, I felt a pang of guilt. I knew I was with Alex, and I loved him. It was just that he was going through some things. I don't remember much of what went down. You know, whenever I complained to him about missing him, he would always remind me that he was doing what he was doing for us so we could spend our lives together, and that everything is over his control. Some of the things he had said, I didn't understand them, like he was doing whatever he was doing for us. My mind kept asking that if he didn't date me or became friends with me on that festival or show that we were in five years ago, who would he tell those excuses because we met at the concert that was even out of the city that I lived in? Yes, he was good at what he does and he was a very focused person when it comes to his business, but I needed his one hour spending time with him. <laughs> we would fight a lot about his time management and the lack of attention, but I knew that love was there. I would be lying if I said Mike loved me less. That guy loved me. He loved me for me, you know. He never judged me or looked down on me because I was coming from a lower class than him. Instead, he would always give me guidance and motivation to work hard so I can live the dream that I had, which is to make myself happy at all times and make sure to prioritize myself and know my worth. Mike and I really loved each other, but it was never enough. I was not getting enough of what I had desired. I love my man so much, Heck, I still love him so much, and I knew he loved me. But when it came to time and its management, he was failing dismally. I didn't know if he was doing all that to please his ego or himself, or I don't know how I can even put it, but what he was doing would push any woman in his life away because it was sickening and cannot be tolerated. Even in the bedroom, he was slacking, which made me think that my husband had maybe reached his menopause and his tool was no longer working like before. I mean, the man was 10 years older than me, so it was possible. The party was a blast. It was epic to a point that I didn't even think about Mike. I had forgotten that he even existed. I had so much fun. So there were some guys that were there. Apparently they had come to Dubai for a vacation since one of their friends and his girlfriend were sharing a birth month. Everyone was enjoying themselves at the party and the girls didn't have any problem. They had such good company and a vibe. Other guys kept coming and all of a sudden we were so many like maybe 15 or 20. That time my husband was not available, so why not spend the night with the strangers because we were having so much fun? Did I commit a crime for doing that? The guy suggested that we go to the nearest hotel to continue with the party. I didn't have a problem moving the party with them to the hotel. When we got to the hotel, the party continued and we had so much fun. I noticed a familiar face in that hotel and I think it was one of Mike's friends or employees or whatever, but I knew that he looked pretty much familiar even though I was really out of it but I wouldn't have mistaken that face no matter how intoxicated I was. The party went on till the following day. Everyone was out of it, but something happened that night and I do not remember it because I was really blackouted. One thing I remember was when we were playing spin the bottle to increase the fun and I would kiss or hand job the guys that I was pointed with. I was avoiding to be more intoxicated and Bianca on another hand had disappeared with some guy. The following morning, I woke up hoping that I would see my friends so we could all go home together. But to my surprise, I woke up with three strangers in bed. 
The worst part was that these strangers were butt naked. I panicked thinking I had been molested, but when I touched myself, it showed that nothing was done to me. Like no intimacy was done, but I had a couple of hickeys on my neck and boobs. Our trip came to an end and I would say that we had fulfilled all our desires with my friend. I had missed home, you know, and my heart yearned for my husband. I was tired of changing men like I was changing underwear. Another thing, there was a day when I couldn't find Bianca anywhere. When I say anywhere, I mean the whole city that we were visiting. You know when you are scared and panicky, you sometimes do things without thinking. James, Bianca's husband, had given me his business card and made me swear to look after his precious wife because she meant a lot to him. You know when desperate times called for desperate measures. I found myself calling James and told him what had happened, but obviously I lied about the men's cases and the reason for us to be in Dubai. I didn't even think about the consequences that would take place if our husbands were to find out about our abomination, but I was stressed and didn't know what to do. James used his connections to locate Bianca's whereabouts. As I was about to call James again and find out if he had any progress in finding Bianca. My friend came to the B&B &B that we had booked in. She came in looking fresh and happy. Mind you, that time I had been so stressed about her, but she came back looking fine and glowing. I was so angry at her because we had to cover our flights back to Canada. I then asked her to tell me where she was. You know when you are anticipating hearing a juicy story, and you shift your focus to that storyteller. As Bianca was about to start her story, we received text messages. And while I received a text message from Mike while she received a call from James. Nah. I don't know how Mike found out about everything that was going down in Dubai, but I got a very long text, more like an essay text. He was telling me that he knew the evilness and abomination that I had done. He was fuming in that text to a point that on some line I got really confused about the things he was saying. What took my attention was when he mentioned that when I get home I won't find him, but I had to bear in mind that he would not let me go free like that after breaking my wedding vows in his heart. He then wrote so many insults, mind you, that time I'm reading the text, and my hands were shaking, tears streaming down my face. When I got home I found everything gone, from his clothes, gadgets, including the furniture that he had bought, I knew there and then that I had messed up a good thing. I found the house literally empty with a piece of paper written, you will regret ever saying yes to my marriage proposal, and I would live happily ever after knowing that I had destroyed you after you had destroyed the only precious thing that we had. A day later, I received divorce papers and a letter that stated that he was taking full responsibility for our baby. A week later, I received a call from Bianca telling me that she was hospitalized because her husband had taken out all his anger on her and told me to check my Twitter. My heart bumped abnormally in the mention of Twitter because I didn't know what was trending. So I logged on to my Twitter account and I saw lots of videos of me and Bianca in Dubai. I was actually the one who was showing more, even the parts where I was handmaking the guys. But what caught my eyes was that I saw Bianca commenting on those videos, painting me as the Queen of Babylon. I just couldn't believe it, you know. My heart was shuddered to a point that I stayed indoors in an empty house with only a bed and cupboards, oh, and a fridge. I wanted to just disappear from the face of the earth and never be found. I didn't know how I would face the world after the disgusting revelations of myself while I was married. Even today, Mike is still making threats and making sure that my life is a living hell. He makes sure to remind me that he has made me the person I am, and he would destroy me at any time. I regret everything you know. I don't even know how I would look at my aunt after what I had done, destroying my marriage. My life just took a drastic turn within a split second. It was supposed to be a great vacation in Dubai with my friend, and it all turned out to be the worst nightmare. There was nothing else to do either than accepting Mike's wrath and revenge. I messed up real bad. I really don't know what to do. I am stuck here and scared. What should I do because I want to go out and maybe find some psychological help? But I'm just scared. Please help me. I'm desperate. Me. I'm...